1986, uh, there was a, an editor called Delegiwa who uh, received a parcel bomb uh, with the coat of arms of the Nigerian State House. And, and General Babaginda was the president at that time. And he was assassinated. That murder has not been solved since. And uh, General Babaginda in 1998 refused to testify uh, before a human rights commission uh, while his security services are certainly um, at least persons of interest in the case. So this large-scale impunity in Nigeria just gives you an idea about how perilous it can be to be a journalist in that country. Uh, this year we've had three journalists that were killed in one day in uh, April. Uh, two were covering um, religious violence in Josh. The other was assassinated in his home. And uh, for years, we have been uh, talking to Nigerian authorities, Nigerian police, about investigating these cases. Uh, the former president, uh, the late president, Yaragua, when he came into office, uh, made this public pledge to uh, investigate murders of prominent personalities, including journalists. Uh, but unfortunately, it uh, remained an empty promise. And uh, it, it is, it continues to be a problem. But uh, having said that, I must say that the media in Nigeria, uh, from the perspective of an African point of view, uh, is certainly one of the most vibrant and most professional media uh, that you have in Africa, just in terms of uh, the quality of the reporting, the number and variety of uh, media outlets that are out there. Uh, certainly, there are more newspapers in Lagos than political parties in Nigeria. And uh, when I say newspapers, the leading titles average between 30 to 100 pages. Um, so these, these are no small publications. And uh, the Nigerian media certainly um, over the years has been looked at as a leader in uh, West Africa and uh, across the continent. And it continues to be.